practicing qualifying are now in the books for the TireRack.com Battle on the Bricks for the IMSO uh, WeatherTech Sports Car Championship. And we break it all down so far. This is Mighty Mac on YouTube. So, practice qualifying are now officially in the books, and we have quite a bit to talk about in the return to the Indianapolis Motor Speedway for the IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship. Right now, it's a little bit loud because the uh, Michelin Pilot Challenge is running, and they are running until, well, it's dark out, which is great. Yep. Got an hour and six minutes and 33, oh, 31. You get it. Yeah. So, practice qualifying all in the books and let's break down kind of what happened throughout qualifying so in the premier class of gtp it is a penske porsche front row um the number seven team of matt campbell and felipe nasser taking the pole position over the sister car of nick tandy and matteo chaminet now one thing that's interesting and not really surprising is the fact that they are now on pole and that they pretty much dominated this weekend so far now now they did get a private 10 hour total time test here about a month ago in the dark. Now that's just Roger Penske doing Roger Penske things here at the Speedway. But obviously that little test time certainly helped them out. And I I think I knew going into this weekend Penske was going to be strong. I mean it's Team Penske, it's Indianapolis. That's just the way it goes. But that extra testing time, I'd like to think it helped. Maybe a little bit. Maybe a lot of it. Yeah. Considering that there was also an open test that Team Penske uh, participated in at, uh, just uh, over a month ago. In third place, we had the uh, Meyer Shank Racing Acura ARX 06 of Colin Braun, who just had a, his first child, and Tom Blomquist to his IndyCar bound. Now, interesting thing about that, there's a lot of controversy around that Meyer Shank uh, team right now because we don't know who they're going to be with next year or if they're going to be on the grid. Right now they're with Acura, but there was a little bit of a falling out after the Rolex 24 Daytona. There's some beef in the paddock, I guess, as the kids would say, um, where basically they ran uh, with lower than normal tire pressures throughout the entire event, won the race, and it appears that it was HPD and Acura that threw them under the bus for this. Now, there's a lot of speculation on where Meyer should go. It's already been heavily alluded to by Honda and Acura that Wayne Taylor Racing will be the sole Acura team next year. But as for Meyer Shank Racing, well, it's a little conspicuous because in terms of the garage and pit assignments, they're pretty much in the middle of all four Porsche teams. So maybe that's a hint, maybe not, but it's kind of kind of funny to say the least. Rounding out here, we have uh, the uh, number zero one, the Cadillac DPI, or GTP, of uh, Chip Ganassi Racing, Sebastian Bourdais and Ranger Van de Zanda, uh, P4. Uh, rounding out the top five, we have Ricky Taylor, Felipe Albuquerque. And six and seventh, we have the two BMW Team RLL cars. And then uh, the number 31 wheel and engineering Cadillac. Now they had brake issues all of yesterday and lost a significant amount of practice time, pretty much all of session one. And they just haven't had the pace this weekend. They actually, outside of Sebring, haven't really had that many stellar performances. And then kind of rounding out, we have the two privateer Porsche 963s from Proton and from JDC Miller. In LMP2, just of note, that Ben Keating and uh, Paul Luke Chateau in the PR1 Matthias and wins livery, number 52 Orca, took pole position in P2. Ahead of the uh, CrowdStrike Racing by APR um, entry with Ben Hanley aboard, and then uh, TDS Racing uh, P3 and P4 with their Orca 07s. In LMP3, just pulse it real quick, uh, JR3 Racing. Now then, I'm gonna turn it over to Brody for the GT coverage. So, GT3 is kinda back at Indy. Of course, the Indianapolis 8 Hour has been running with the Intercontinental GT Challenge for three years now. Different homologation. I am gonna be referencing some of that in this. So, on pole, surprise, surprise, with Madison Snow qualified the GTD BMW M4 on pole and the Paul Miller car. What, uh, what, they don't have a sponsor, do they? Uh, they do, Total. Total, yeah, there we go. Total so, ports. And then starting right behind them is going to be FAF and their Porsche 911. 
which is a GTD Pro Car in your GTD Pull Sitter. So an interesting mix there. So the rest for GTD, your top three there, is of course going to be the Paul Miller BMW, the Krothoff Preston Motorsports Mercedes AMG. Mercedes is the reigning winner in GT racing technically at Indianapolis with the eight hour. Again, different homologations, kind of doesn't matter, but also kind of does in my opinion. Turner BMW is going to round out third in the GTD class, moving down to GTD Pro again. We have FAF Motorsports on their Porsche on the pole. WeatherTech in their Mercedes, the number 79, right? Daytona 24-hour winner. Could they do the Jamie McMurray? Could they sweep Indy and Daytona in their class? We're going to find out tomorrow. They're starting second in class. Lexus's manufacturer debut here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. The number 14, excuse me, is going to be starting in third in GDD Pro. Again, that is their de uh, debut in manufacture in Indianapolis. So, things to know, of course, the big thing to know, I think, is a GTD Pro car, or GTD car being on pole overall. Well, that's not necessarily a surprising thing from the last couple of years, um, because the GTD Pro and the GTD cars are balanced um, in pretty, pretty close to each other. Now, basically, we've seen GTD cars take the overall GT win, we've seen GTD Pro cars. The only difference is the allotment of driver lineup, so that means that well, here in sports car racing, to kind of simplify it for you guys, um, drivers are rated based off of their experience, based off of a lot of things, really. Age as well is one of them. Um, they're rated uh, platinum, gold, bronze, or gold, silver, and bronze. So GTD, um, they, so GTD, they have to have one bronze driver. Meanwhile, in GTD Pro, you can have as many pro drivers as you want. So that's the big differentiating factor between the classes. And you do see these situations where they um, are able to, the GTDs are right there on par with the GTD Pro cars because it's the same machinery, same balance performance rule set. Correct. And something I think with some of these drivers, and it's something interesting is that with GT3 racing, you have people who have raced here before, like Madison Snow. He's raced in the eight hour for the Lamborghini, I'm forgetting the name of the team, uh, Zeus? Uh, yeah, Zeus. Yeah, so, I mean, there's a, a varying levels of experience throughout the GT3 field. I think it's going to be a lot of fun to watch. I think it's going to be a close race in the GT3 field. I really like how FAF looks. I really like how the WeatherTech team looks. I really like how... I like that, how all the Porsches look. Yeah, Porsche. Porsche came to this track strong. And like I said the other night on the... Uh, video we did on Main Street. Paul Miller Racing has had the season of their lives and they're continuing to go from strength to strength from round to round and it continues to amaze me how that BMW team is able to really make that car work and a really stacked deck of GT racing here in IMSA. Yeah and going back to the first eight hour again different homologation but BMW did win the first eight hour in this GT3 car the second one was won by Audi. Audi, and the third one was won by Mercedes. Something I actually forgot to mention, uh, Ferrari are the reigning winners of the GT3 class here, and Viper won the pole in the number 93 Riley, or yeah, 93 Riley in 2014, neither of which are here today or this weekend, so we have a decent shot of a first-time winner in GT3. Uh, 100%. Yeah. That's pretty good. Pretty good. Now... A couple quick notes, the Andretti Autosport Aston Martin that we showed you on Thursday's video, it popped an engine yesterday, they were back out today and they were towards the bottom of the timesheets, 45th overall and I cannot count that far down in GTD. Um, and yeah, other than that, I, I, I really don't have much beyond that. Um, so yeah, that's kind of wrapping up practice qualifying from here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway for the TireRack.com Battle on the Bricks. Stay tuned tomorrow for race coverage. Um, there's going to be definitely a lot of storylines. It's a two and a bit hour, two hour, 45 minute race. And weirdly enough, this is a one off. This is the only time we're going to have a two hour and 45 minute race because starting next year, it's going to be a part of the Michelin Endurance Cup with a six hour and 45 minute race. So this right here is a taster of what we are going to see next year. And I think it's worth mentioning too, of course, this is the Sprint Cup finale for the IMSA WeatherTech Series. So we'll crown a Sprint Cup champion tomorrow. Absolutely. So 
For myself, Kevin, and Brody, we thank yep. you so much for watching Mighty Mac on YouTube. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, all the other stuff that he says normally. Um, just splice in a clip of you saying stuff. Um, and yeah, yeah, so thanks for watching, guys, and we will see you back here tomorrow. And I love you.